Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. I am raring to go for the finals. Flower garden deck, this should be pretty easy actually. <laughs> because remember that I took the took on the grass club um, using the early game deck Charmander and Fred's deck that I had just because it was mostly effective against their weak decks, but you could pretty much take any deck into the Grass Club and have a relatively easy time with them. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and since I've got a pretty decent Rain DDR deck going on here, I think this is going to be a pretty one-sided match. Oh my god! Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise in the opening hand! What more could I ask for? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe more energy cards, but chances are I'm going to get uh, some sort of draw card a little bit later on, and yeah, <laughs> we'll see how things go. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win within the next six turns or so, because she's probably going to evolve something and not allow me to flat out destroy her with Blastoise's water gun? <laughs> Possibly. What we are going to see here, I'm just, whoops, I'm going to just continue to Fury Swipe and get its HP down for the future. It's not super helpful, but you know, <laughs> it's just to try and get it to a point uh, that, well, actually, it, Blastoise the, the rain, rain, the, rain, not rain dance. The uh, hydro pump would do 40 at its minimum. So I guess the fury swipes beyond that initial one were kind of, kind of useless. All right, so I'm gonna do that, and yep, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, look at that hydro pump! <laughs> this is why I said I'm gonna win within the next six turns or so, uh, because. I will probably get the energy cards to be able to do 60 damage turn after turn, and uh, she's probably going to fill up her bench with just enough Pokemon in order for me to have to take all my prize cards. And she also has the shot of paralyzing Blastoise, so... Uh, but the very best that I could do is, uh, like, four turns after I said that. Uh, I just pump! Oh yeah! <laughs> Sweeping time, baby! Um, yeah, she won't even be able to attack with that. Uh, yep, she had managed to fill up her whole bench, as I expected. Alright. Legendary Articuno, too, to freeze stuff. I might as well evolve that, because why not? Uh, I could trade to something, but, eh, I'm just gonna hurry this along. <laughs> it's just very difficult to defeat a Blastoise at full power like this when you don't have the energy cards or the power to take it out in a, in a few turns, because when I'm dishing out 50-60 damage per turn with one, that's a big problem. And it looks like she will be feeling the full wrath of my Blastoise, just for the fun of it. <laughs> Aw, yeah! Woo! Victory! And now... After you win the Challenge Cup, you have the chance of getting 13 different promotional cards at random! Hopefully I will be able to get the level 8 Mew that I forgot to grab because I forgot about the Challenge Cup. Level 16 Pikachu! Ow! Oh! Oh! <laughs> they tend to give out this card a lot at the Challenge Cup, actually, come to think of it. No! Oh! <laughs> oh. Congratulations, Mark! Thank you! Alright, so, what should I do next? What I'm thinking is, uh, do I have the Clefable for Ishihara? Oh, by the way, Ronald is hanging out here. Who? Oh, it's you, Mark. I couldn't believe I could lose, but now, now I understand. The fun thing about the Pokemon trading card game is not who wins or loses. I couldn't inherit the legendary Pokemon cards because all that was important to me was winning. But now I understand. What's important is to love each card, to use all the different cards to build different types of decks, and to play against different people. So, Mark, would you play with me again? With all sorts of different decks? And this time, I'm not, I not, I not gonna lose? I think they did a little typo there. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark, do you want a duel? 
Why, sure! I can't! I'm building a new deck. I'm busy building a deck better than yours. We'll duel another time. And, yeah, it doesn't matter what you choose, he won't duel you here, but he will duel you at the Challenge Cup with his Invincible Ronald deck uh, whenever you find him. But anyway, do you have a, have a Clefable? I don't remember. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. If that is... Yeah, that is pretty true. <laughs> Those cards have a mind of their own, and they most certainly want you to duel with them. <laughs> so... What about that trade? Yes, I am. So you're looking for Clefable? Yes, yes, Surfing Pikachu? No, I don't have one still. I don't know what I can do. Oh no. Well, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is uh, uh, picking up cards off camera to uh, be able to get those Surfing Pikachus of Legend. But for now, what I should do is uh, go over to these auto deck machines and show you the decks that you might not have seen already. See, uh, it's much easier to check these things out when you have all the medals, because chances are you won't have the cards to even build any of the decks in these things, because, yeah, it just takes a while to accumulate the cards. So I thought I would check these out a little bit later, and I guess later it will be now. So it's th these aren't working, because the medals aren't inserted. I don't know why... The deck, I, these things would require metals to get them working, but okay. <laughs> so let's insert the fighting metal, and it's been activated! So let's check out the decks you can get here. Um, you probably recognize some of these decks from the stuff that we've come across, but some of these are new to us, so let's uh, check these out right here. So all fighting Pokemon deck is sort of like a cornucopia of way too many different cards and not all that much focus. Uh, Bench Attack has more focus. Uh, it's, it's focused around um, attacking the bench, obviously, but I mean that it's got more copies of multiple cards to give the deck some more consistency. Uh, they chose this version of Meowth because, yeah, I can hit bench Pokemon. Um, Otherwise, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm not sure if we've seen the Battle Contest deck before. We might have... I don't remember what the Fighting Club member names were. At the, it actually uses Dragonite. It's kind of interesting. Oh, and Dragonair, too. I think Dragonair is better than Dragonite, actually, because of the... Because Dragonite's... I mean, while you can switch Dragonite in easily, uh, its slam is too coin flip basty, and uh, Dragonair's... Slam is also coin flippy, but it's Hyper Beam is the thing you're aiming for. You get 20, get 20 damage guarantee and you sap the energy cards. Plus it's got the uh, 80 HP, but I went through why uh, Dragonair is a great Pokemon before. Alright, let's go over to the Rock Metal deck machine. Of course, we gotta insert the Rock Metal to get it moving. And Squeaking Mouse deck. Very, oops, didn't mean to do that. This is... A sort of kind of mouse type deck. We've got Pikachus, we've got Sand Shoes, we've got Raichu, we got Rotata. Yeah, it's it 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 doesn't really have a focus other than it just being a mouse type deck. <laughs> uh, I could use those Dug Trios for this deck. <laughs> yeah, I'd use Dug Trios Earthquake to cause great damage, but. Really, I think Rhydon's the more solid Pokémon for this deck than Dugtrio, although it is nice to be able to do uh, 70 damage with the Earthquake turn after turn, even if it does damage your bench Pokémon with it. Uh, I don't know what's the point of Snorlax here. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I, I guess maybe for stalling, but it's got that high retreat cost, and the Pokémon in this deck need a lot of energy cards, so it probably won't have that much to spare. So I'm not really sure what Snorlax is doing in here. I mean, I guess it has 25 fighting energy cards, but just think of how many turns it would take to power up these Pokémon to begin with. Um, Bone Attack deck. I'm guessing it's a uh, Cubone Marowak type thing. Yeah, what? what? Uh, oh, it had th this copy of Marowak. There's two different ones in this game. I was thinking of the only, the only jungle one, but I forgot about the Game Boy one. I always forget about the Game Boy cards for some reason. Uh, other than the legendary cards, because they they're, they're, they're kind of like the prized cards that really really stand out because of the, the, you know they talk to you and they're just rare in general. And anyway, I think that is all the new cards. Let's go to the water metal deck machine and see. Oh, I can actually build the uh, three of these decks. Interesting. 
Uh, ooh, energy removal deck. Let's read this one. Uh, Whirlpool and Hyper Beam. This is the kind of deck that I was talking about making earlier. Uh, but I was, I'm sort of kind of combining this with the uh, Rain DDR deck in my plans. Uh, I don't see the the point of Haunter here in the deck strategy. Uh, Dragonair fits, but I don't. I really don't know what Ghastly and Haunter are doing here. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, they're here. But I wouldn't really recommend them for the theme. <laughs> um, for energy removal cards, they're also kind of lacking, so you might want to bulk up on those. Uh, let's see the Paralyzed... Wait, Rain Dancer deck? That's not the Go-Go Rain Dance deck. Huh. Use Rain Dance to attach water energy for the powerful attacks. <clears throat> um... Wait, this is... I think this is Amy's deck. Huh. 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 <laughs> it's named differently here? Okay. Anyway, let's read the Paralyzed deck. Paralyze the opponent's Pokémon. Stop them and drop them! Paralyzing is a pretty strong strategy, as you've seen with uh, uh, various Pokémon that I've used, as well as Smokescreen Pokémon, which sort of acts as paralysis in a way. So paralyzing is a nice strategy. Um, I don't know about well-balanced, because having one copy of a card isn't really the most consistent, but it does allow you to try a bunch of different cards in this particular deck build. Like, see, having, as I, as I always say, having two or more copies of a card is your best strategy. Well, I guess having one Dugong wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be nice to have more than one copy, because Dugong is a pretty solid water Pokémon. Uh, anyway, Blue Water deck, this is another one of those sort of... Just throw everything in the deck, and hope it'll work. <laughs> I mean, just look at this this evolution balance here. Two Poliwag, one Poliwhirl, Poliwrath. Good luck getting the Poliwrath out, let alone a Poliwhirl. <laughs> and I bet uh, this deck doesn't even have Pokemon Breeder to help along with that. Uh, it has Pokemon Trader. Yeah, it doesn't even have Pokemon Breeder. So that's not really the best deck that you can choose of all the decks. Anyway, let's go to the Lightning Metal here. Let's see here. Uh, cute Pokemon deck. Uh, Pikachu and Eevee, huh? So that's the entire theme, is just cuteness! Yes! Cuteness will kill the opponent! So, this is, these are some pretty rare cards here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can get them from the Ishihara. Uh, the ones that I can't trade for right now! Uh, but actually, I think I have all the cards I need to trade for all these Pikachus, except for Clefable. It's just that I can't get to the other trades, because I don't have a Clefable. So, yeah. I'll get one offhand. Ah, Clefable! The card that I need! The card that I need from a booster! I'll be getting one of these off-camera or something like that, and then, yeah. Uh, anyway... Uh, oh, there's a whole bunch of Jigglypuff versions, including the rare promotional one. So it's just like, hey, let's throw all the Jigglypuff versions in here, not really have much of a focus and choice between the Jigglypuffs, but hey, let's just do it. <laughs> Uh, wait, why two, two Wigglypuff and four Jigglypuff? I would definitely have, th uh, three Wigglypuff, maybe even four, because Wigglypuff was a really good Pokémon to have. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, does it have four double colorless energy? I, I didn't really pay much attention to the energy. Uh, computer search might be nice for it, um, Let's just see here... Uh, two! Of all the colorless Pokémon, you only have two?! Ah! <laughs> Let's see what the Pokémon Flute deck is. It's probably, um, use Pokémon Flute to revive the opponent's Pokémon and then gust of win them over. But let's see. Um, da -da 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 -da, boo -boo -boo -boo. Or maybe the idea is to uh, destroy them with self-destruct, so, like, revive a Pokémon on the bench with low HP and then self-destruct them away. Maybe. Uh, but let's see. Gust of Wind. Oh, yep, yep, that's the idea. Gust of Wind and Poké Flute co uh, Pokémon Flute combo. Okay, yellow flash deck. What is this thing? Lightning energy to zap opponents? Is this another one of those ragtag, throw everything in sorts of decks that doesn't have any focus but to just put every electric Pokemon or, or every Pokemon of an element together? That's what it's looking like to me. 
Uh, let's for shock deck. Let's see, shocks and paralyzes. That's a pretty nice strategy. Uh, what's with all the Pikachu versions? Oh wait, these two are identical, with probably different pictures. Yeah, I didn't look at the level before. Um, only two copies of Raichu for four copies of Pikachu, another offset balance of uh, evolutions. Again with the Magnemites, Magnetons. Four Magnemites, two Magnetons. Uh, Voltorb and Electrode are pretty correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what these uh, tech designers are thinking here. No! <laughs> Maybe I should just get one from Amazon or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we know the Zapping Self-Destruct deck. Let's go over to the other ones. Grass Metal. Let's do it! Uh, by the way, I decided to check out decks this part because I figured I had a lot of time this part and there's a lot of decks to check out that we haven't uh, seen that they give you ideas for in the auto deck machines. So yeah, I thought I would use the rest of the time because this is mostly post-game anyway. I thought you might uh, like some ideas for deck building somewhere along the line. And, uh, this is kind of balanced, but it's still got those one copy final evolutions. But it's got, but it's, it's step, it steps down the evolutions though, like four, three, and you got three, two, one. But yeah. Ooh, Scyther. Oh, ho, ho. that pincer. <laughs> um, okay. Jungle deck. I bet this is one of the throw everything in decks. There are many dangers in the jungle. There's also a lot of off-balance in these decks. <laughs> Look at that, there's there's the 2-1-1 one, one again. 2-1-1, one, one. why? Just why? 2-1-1, uh, one, one. once again. Maybe it's just to save room or something like that. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. <laughs> I don't know, I'm puzzled. Uh, of all the things they have, multiple copies, and they have good copies of uh, Plus Power and Defender, that's nice at least. Uh, so whatever you draw, you can kind of surprise the opponent with. Uh, flower Garden deck... Did we see this one? I think we did see the Flower Garden deck, because there was Flower Garden and Flower Power. Yeah, I'm gonna assume you've seen that. We've definitely seen Kaleidoscope and Flower Power from uh, uh, the Grass Metal. Let's insert the Psychic Metal and check those out. Arrgh, the most annoying deck of all time. You can see its build in full. Well, you've already seen the, the deck off to the side of the screen, but still, the most annoying deck is here. Uh, let's see, Psychic Power. Uh, um, 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 Alakazam's nice, but it's only got one copy! Why? Why? <laughs> Again with Slowbro, it's a sort of Alakazam substitute. It, it is the uh, poor man's Alakazam, I guess you could call it, because of the whole uh, strange behavior for moving damage counters to it, as opposed to being able to move damage counters at will to anywhere that you want. But, well, maybe, I shouldn't say poor man's, actually, because Slowbro is inherently easier to get out than Alakazam, just because it's a stage 1 evolution as opposed to stage 2. So, Slowbro does have its own use, I guess you could say. Um, uh, these are all over the place. I think they just want to use all the copies of Ghastly and Haunter that they could possibly find, just for the sake of using all of them, and then there's only one type of Gengar in the game. <laughs> but I guess the evolutions are sort of kind of balanced, aside from these odd one copies of things. Yeah, it's just look, looking like they're, they're throwing everything in, just because again. Oh, oh, come on! One Clefairy and one Clefable? And why are they in a Psychic Power deck anyway, if they want to show off all the Psychic Pokémon? I, I mean, I guess they're sort of mystical-like, which is why they're in here, so they sort of kind of fit, but they're not Psychic Pokémon. Or maybe they're, they're there for the Psychic Resistance? But still, shouldn't there be two copies of Clefairy and one of Clefairy Fable at least? If they're gonna fit in with the whole one final evolution theme of like Drowsy Hypno. Or maybe they just did that because of Clefairy being a rare card and so is Clefable. I don't know! I can't think of good reasons. I guess these decks are more of like a base to build on with to give you an idea and then you modify them into something better. Uh, but right off the bat, probably not the best decks to use. Even the, the decks by the Clubmasters could use some tweaking. 
Uh, but that's just me and my perfectionism, <laughs> probably. Um, hmm, what is this deck like? Okay, see, it says Dream Eater Haunter deck, right? Well, why is this copy of Haunter in here, then? The, is it the put a Pokemon to sleep and then you switch to this Haunter? But you already have Hypnosis for this Haunter, and... I don't know! I'm hurting my head. Oh, Scavenging Slowbro deck. Continually draw trainer cards in this discard pile. This is an interesting deck right here. Uh, see, Scavenge for a Slowpoke here. Yep. So the idea is to use that to pull various kinds of trainer cards that you might need. I'd probably recommend using more Professor Oaks and Bills, even because there's nothing in here. Because having draw power to pull with your Slowpokes is pretty nice. Just saying. Um, but otherwise, the rest of the cards seem pretty straightforward here. Uh, I don't, I don't know why there's no Wigglytuff when there's so many Jigglypuffs here. This is well, actually this is. I'm gonna think of it. This is kind of a bad deck. <laughs> it doesn't even have the Mulligan Mewtwo type deck where you have all Psychic Energy and four copies. I mean, you know, like th this Mewtwo is made for. Well, I should say it's made for just one type of deck, but I mean, the best type of use for this deck is to use Mewtwo's Barrier with a whole load of energy cards. It's probably the cheapest deck you can possibly use. Just just four copies of Mewtwo, uh, maybe an Imposter Professor Oak or something to make your opponent draw more cards. You know, make your opponent draw out, and then just stall the opponent with Barrier. It's incredibly cheap, but it doesn't always work because your opponent can energy removal you. Or Gust of Wind to a bench uh, Mewtwo or something like that, just to offset you. But yeah, that's the best use for this version of Mewtwo. Otherwise, you would want to use the other version of Mewtwo for your uh, Psychic decks. Uh, I like seeing three copies of Jinx in this deck, though. I'm, I'm kind of unsure what the whole Jigglypuff thing is going on here. Maybe... Maybe it's for the Friendship Song, but then why would this version of Jigglypuff be in there? Maybe for the Lullaby? I don't know, let's get out of here. A strange power deck. Uh, I think we've seen this deck before. Yeah, we've seen this deck before. Okay, so we're done with this machine. Science Metal. Ba -ba -da! Boop -ba -doo! We've seen that, we've seen that, we've seen that, we've seen... No, we didn't see this. Uh, did we? I don't think we've seen this. Uh, Poison actually doesn't really slowly knock out the opponent per se. It's pretty quick, if you think about it, because it's 20 damage uh, per set of turns unless the opponent switches. Uh, so yeah, pretty good stuff, although, uh, uh, you know, the, the Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill line are sort of iffy, I mean, just look at the HP, Kakuna's got 80, Beedrill's got 80, uh, for a stage 2 Pokemon that's not really the best, but the whole thing is that every evolution line has something that can, I mean, ha has something that can poison, that's why it's in here, and that's not a bad choice, actually, if you're going for a poison deck to keep, keep your opponent on the toes, on their toes for switching. Uh, but you might actually just want to stick with the Kakunas and go for the Poison Powder, because Poison Powder still has the Coin Flip thing. Uh, although Poison Scene does do 40 for 3, plus the Coin Flip. So it's your call here. Uh, Ekans and Arabok are fantastic for a Poison deck, because the Poison Fang is a guaranteed Poison type thing. Even though it's got low HP, it's, it's the whole thing of messing with the opponent's Pokémon. And the Terror Strike is also good for offsetting opponent's Pokémon as well. Um, Needle King, fantastic with the Toxic. Defending, now guaranteed to be poisoned. Defending Pokemon, guaranteed. Think of that. And it's a special kind of poison. It's a double poison. Yeah. Uh, Coughing is always a great basic Pokemon. Even though it takes two, uh, two, H, uh, two HP. <laughs> two energy cards for its foul gas. It's just the whole thing. That you always get a good uh, status effect from it. Uh, Weezing, eh. There's a poison too, and a little self-destruct too, in case you need that as well. Um, what's the point of Imposter Professor Oak in this deck? I don't know. Um, the rest of it, I guess, will work. See, potions could work for the Weezings, for the self-destructs. Uh, Professor Oak's just good for drawing, but I add more Professor Oaks and Bill, as always. Draw, pow draw power is king. I shouldn't even have to say that now. Draw power, just just put them in. You'll be happy. <laughs> uh, looks like the, all the decks are here, except for I mean, all the decks that the people use are here. Uh, Fire metal. Let's do it. Replace them all deck. What the heck is this? 
A deck that shuffles the opponent's cards? Um... Uh, oh, I see. Lure. Yeah. Uh, Mix-up. Ah, I see. So it's, it's a deck that offsets the opponent. Sorta, kinda. Ah, uh, wait, this version is, uh... No, neither of these could really offset the opponent's cards. Uh, this is... the Pidgey line is most certainly used for the Whirlwinds. Uh, wait, actually, what is... Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's for the Gale. And then this one's for the, uh, the Hurricane. Yeah! Uh, I don't know... Oh, maybe this one's for the Retreat Aid to throw off the Pokémon? Of your, of your, I mean, throw off your opponent? Maybe? I don't, I don't know, because I don't really see the whole idea of Doju, Dodu or Dodrio. Maybe it's just filler. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Lass, that's a nice card. Uh, for this deck, especially, uh, Imposter Professor Oak. Another one that might be pretty good, potentially. It all depends on what your opponent draws. You might just make your opponent draw into something really good. Uh, but that appears to be it for the decks, so with that, I'm gonna end off the part here. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next part, when I will probably have the cards that I need to have grinded for off-camera. Hopefully! <laughs> Ta-da-doo!